Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics, and today I'll be sharing with you how I like to make hourglass blocks. The quilt behind me, See Us for Christmas, is one of our newest designs. And as you can see, the hourglass blocks are really everywhere in this quilt. It's the sashing in between the different embroidered and applique blocks. It's framing the interior of the quilt. And so mastering the hourglass block will be very important for you in order to accomplish this quilt. It's not hard, but there's definitely a technique. And I do mine just a little bit differently than the way I was taught. Um, and so let me get started in showing you how I do make the hourglass block. Now in this particular quilt, the hourglass block finishes to an inch and a half. Just keep that in mind. The finished measurement is an inch and a half. And so the hourglass unit needs to be two inches unfinished. So what I do when I make hourglass block is I add a full inch to my unfinished measurement. Again, this is an inch and a half finished with the quarter inch raw edges all the way around. That will be two inches. So we're going to start by adding a full inch. So I cut my two squares to three inches each and we'll be making one of the red and cream hourglass blocks. They're both cut to three inches. Then on the back side of the lighter fabric, and I do this consistently whenever I do um, marking on the back of a fabric or two fabrics, I always choose the lighter of course because then it's easier for me to see my markings. So using some kind of marking tool, and I like this one, this is the friction pen. I draw precisely from one diagonal to the other on the lighter fabric. Then right sides together. Don't forget that. You don't want to sew wrong side to wrong side or right side to right side. Okay, with the right sides together, with the marked fabric on top, we will come to the sewing machine and stitch a quarter inch on either side of the line. And that quarter inch is really important that you do this consistently. This quilt in particular, I noticed it as I was making it, was really based on precision cutting and sewing. And so just make sure you have a good quarter inch seam allowance, not too wide, not too little. Then I don't really need to trim my stitches. I'll just pivot around and come back down. The next step of the hourglass block is involves setting this on your cutting mat in such a way that you will be able to cut both diagonals. I'll show you what I mean. So of course we'll cut on that drawn line to start with. And then very carefully pick up the ruler and I'm going to probably come in from this direction. I think it's probably safer to cut from this direction. We'll cut the other diagonal. So now you have four units as you can see. The next important step that I've learned in the process really of quilting in general is pressing. We want to make sure that we consistently press in this, to the same almost pressure and of course the same direction. In this particular case it makes sense to press toward the darker fabric versus the lighter fabric because if let's say there was some red peeking out here. I don't want that showing through on my cream fabric. So consistently, as a matter of habit, just press to the darker fabric. 
Now I've grabbed my sealing iron because it's I'm working with very small shapes, so there's really not a big uh, there's no reason to bring out my big iron. I love this Hobbyco iron. I use it, of course, for applique. If you haven't seen uh, the applique tutorial where you can see the potential of how this Iron really is fantastic with applique. You can see too how it's just great for working with smaller shapes. You don't need to bring out that big bulky iron for that. So we're going to press everything to the red. Now I, I try to consistently press and not, not this motion because that distorts my fabric and complicates my next step. So I first try to finger press everything in that direction, and then I come in with my iron to really solidify that fold. And then one more. Okay, so from two squares, I have four units like this, as you can see. I will create what they're going to look like here. See how that works? How cool is that? From just two fabrics, I get two hourglass blocks. Now, this is one a really important step too, and that's not just hourglass blocks, but in quilting in general. This seam is going this direction, this seam is going this direction. I make sure to first nest those seams. I want you to see that, how that kind of locks in. Now if this was a bigger shape, I would be getting my pins out and I would actually be pinning that spot right in there. I'd pin that side and I would pin that side. And we can still do that. It's just with smaller shapes, that needle's a little bit bent. With smaller shapes, you can hold it, but with a longer shape, like a bigger, a bigger unit, I would pin the whole thing because I don't want it to shift. Because of course, you want these things to come together in a perfect, well, as perfect as humans can be, a perfect point. So nesting those seams just so and pinning them helps make sure that's going to happen. So now let's go back to the sewing machine. And again, here comes our quarter inch seam allowance. I make sure all of my seams are lying flat. And as I approach my needle, I take it out. Make sure my edges are still lined up. And of course, I would do the same with the other two units. I wouldn't normally cut my thread at this point. I would, I would chain stitch and do the other two units, but for the sake of time, we'll just work on this one. And now we'll open that up. And look at that, they've come together perfectly. Now I like to, at this point, because I don't want the bulk on this side or that side, I like to press the seam open. So for that reason, I do tend to sew as a matter of habit with a little bit of a shorter seam allowance. It does make it kind of a pain if I have to seam rip, which of course I do, um, plenty, plenty. Um, but I like to often press my seams open. It just seems to make my um, blocks and then my overall quilt lie flatter, but it does mean that you should sew with a shorter seam allowance so that when those seams are pressed open, the, the shape doesn't weaken in any way. So, and I like to press from the front. Now, as I mentioned before, the finished hourglass block is one and a half. So at this point, this should measure two, but it actually will be bigger than that because I like to now go in and square up my hourglass block so they're absolutely two inches going into my quilt. So let's bring this now to our cutting mat. And at this point, we're about two and a quarter, but this is where 
I really like the precision of being able to trim, trim the hourglass blocks and get rid of these little flaps and these little flags that are hanging out here. So what I do at this point is I line up on a line of my cutting mat and I'm visually trying to project that that line will tr pass right through that point where everything's coming together and then out the other side. So once I get that positioned, I bring in my ruler. That's where the smaller rulers really come into play. Now we know that we want two inches. So from the center, we want to measure out one inch from the center this way, this way, this way, and this way, and then you'll have exactly two inches. So press down firm. And then I turn. This is where those uh, cutting mats that have the uh, circle that you can rotate really comes into play. Um, I don't have that here with me today or I would absolutely be using that where I'm spinning the mat and not the shape because that way you don't have to keep lining it up. But this is good practice for us too, to just keep lining up. And notice how if, I, if, if my line's not running right through that point, I just adjust it. That's where I like it. Lay the ruler on gently. It's passing right through that center point. And we'll do the same on all four sides. This is an extra step, um, but I have found that when I take the extra time to square up hourglass blocks, I do the same thing with pinwheel blocks. Boy, the quilt in the end just looks, and, and for me, so much better. Um, I really want my quilts to hang straight. I want all the points to come together. And these extra steps seem to be the answer to what I'm looking for. So we're cutting our final side here. Line it up just a little bit better. Again, it's so much better on that spinning mat because then you're not having to move your shape over and over, but that's okay. There we go. So there's our hourglass block. So keep in mind, say you're going to be doing a project that's just hourglass blocks. It doesn't have to be the Sia's for Christmas quilt. Again, just review the steps. Take the unfinished measurement of the hourglass block and add an inch to that shape, or to, yeah, to that shape, cut both pieces out to that size, draw your line diagonal from diagonal on the back side of the lighter fabric, so a quarter inch on either side, lay the shape down to the mat, cut on the drawn line, cut on the other diagonal, press to the darker fabric, nest those seams, Pin if you need to, because you don't, you want this perfect point. That's what we're all after, right? We all want that. Take the extra time to pin if you need to. So very precisely a quarter inch, press open, bring to your cutting mat, figure out what you want that shape to be. Two inches, right, is what we said on this particular instance. Put, your, put it on your, your mat, your ruler over the top, trim all the way around evenly on all four sides. So there you go, that's the Hourglass Block. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials. And of course, we're always introducing new projects. Thank you.